If we are talking about what constitutes a civil society, say if you wrote in one of your books, I quote, reason is the only possible barrier against barbarism, fanaticism, and stupidity. That's a big statement. Reason is the only barrier against barbarism, fanaticism, and stupidity. Why is it that you're putting all your cards on reason? Well, <clears throat> first of all, I want to tell you, Rob, that it's much easier to ask the questions you are asking than to give an answer to you. <laughs> but uh, yes, I, I think absolutely that uh, all our rights, our liberties, the rights of man, justice, all these are inventions of reason. All this does not exist in nature. We invented all this in order to give a meaning to our life and to organize a decent society. So uh, reason is really the alpha and omega. You know, uh, civilized society is a society which places emphasis on what unites people. And As what, John said. And, yeah, and what unites people is their status as reasonable beings, as, as, as rational beings. People who are rational and consequently adult and equal, as Kant said, or as Rousseau has put it, rational beings who are able to create their own world, the world in which they live. It started in the 70th century, with the, in fact, with the fathers of liberalism, Hobbes and Locke, but in the 18th century, the Enlightenment has given all this the proportion of an enormous revolution, a tremendous revolution. And when I am speaking of enlightenment, I am not speaking of the age of the enlightenment. I am not speaking only on the 18th century. And here I am following Sorel and Spengler, for whom enlightenment was a form of civilization. It was a concept a framework of a civilization. And the Enlightenment could be the Italian Enlightenment, the Chinese Enlightenment, or the European Enlightenment in the 18th century. As such, as such the Enlightenment, based on the rationality of human beings, gives us the capability to build our own world. Can I interfere? I mean, is rationalism directly linked to civilization? I think a rational being or human being seems to be, for me, an illusion. An, uh, an illusion? Illusion, yes. Okay. As, as for human being, we are not only driven by our intellect, we are driven by our passions, by our beliefs, by our values. So. As a being, we are a multi-dimensional being. Not only do we do things because we are thinking or because we are rational, most of our deeds are being made, are, we are making history, most of it through passions. Even the concept of national states did not come after a, an analyt analytical thinking which has pushed uh, humanity or Europeans to create a national state. It was rather through passions, through poets, and through uh, 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 writers of novels. It was a dream which has been, uh, uh, which, which became part of history. And this dream actually is, is more powerful than rationalism. I think we need to treat ourselves as multidimensional uh, um, beings. We do things, we, do, we make history not only through uh, our strengths, but we also make things through our weaknesses. That's 
what differentiate the human uh, nature or the human being from our other creatures. Desaif made a very important statement that he says, well, you know, our moral values can only be grounded in reason. That's the only thing that's, that has a universal value. So if you question his insight that it can only be reason, then in what, according to you, are our moral values grounded? I'm, I'm not putting a contradiction between reason and values or passions. These are not, they, they do not come in contradiction, but they do come as a, as a package together. However, if we put reason as if we are in, in the laboratory, how to say it in English, laboratory, outside of our everyday life, then it's not reason. It's like a calculated uh, zero and ones only, but that's not a human being. That's not what drives us to think. That's not what drives us. There is beside reason what we call wisdom. So you can have a person who is really rational, but he has no wisdom, so he will use his reason in evil ways. So, but wisdom, what is it? It's not, is it only rationalist? It's experience, it's our history, it's our memory, it's our feelings, our family, it's our, it's all of us, all what makes us human. So, okay, no, but I think that the more concrete question then is, for your concept of being civilized and, and moral values, do you need the concept of a god, yes or no? Of a god? A god, yeah. I think, yes, we do need the concept of God. So that's a, beliefs, that's a big difference, what, what Stenhel yeah, says. Yeah. Because uh, beliefs are part of our rational. I don't understand. I mean, in any cases, we need to start from a belief. We need to start from, for example, that we do exist. Otherwise, if we do not believe that we do exist and that we are capable of thinking, then we cannot proceed into doing things, into even thinking. I mean, this is what Descartes was trying to do. So, to, so beliefs are part of our rationals. And what Descartes has done, actually, is that he's called God as guarantor for his belief. Otherwise, he would go to the eternity into, into his skepticism. So I think, yes, God is part of our rational, and it is maybe a condition for that rationalism. So you're right, it is the enlightenment. It's the idea that we have rights and values and that we then respect each other. And if you have to, you enforce it by the rule of law or the gun. Sometimes it takes violence to get people to come around. It took a civil war and 700,000 dead in America to put an end to slavery. Sometimes that's what it takes. It'd be better if we didn't, we're all in the education business and the idea business, if we could just write and convince ISIS that they shouldn't do, do this, that's not gonna happen. Uh, the, uh, so a Amos this morning was right, it, it, you know, in the long run we need the moderate uh, Muslims to, to rein in the extremists, but the idea that the problem is, is, is extremism or extreme religion is, is also not true. The Jains are extremists, they, do, they don't wanna kill even bugs, but I'm not worried about the Jains coming to my house. Uh, the Mormons you know, have all kinds of wacky beliefs, as do Scientologists, but I'm not worried about them. It's the belief that the creator of the universe wrote a book, and he's omniscient, and the right answers are in the book, and all you gotta do is memorize them, and anybody that doesn't see that is wrong and therefore must be brought to bear under it or killed. No. That's the problem. No, come on. The tw uh, the, no, come by, on. no, 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 by the, by the time, by the end of the 20th century, after the experience of fascism and communism, it's perfectly clear that both secular civilizations oh, and religious oh. civilizations can commit yes. enormous atrocities. I said God or ideology, but I Marxism mean, is a faux religion. It's an cannot, idea that there's an absolute truth, that, 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 that you can know that. And they were wrong, and, and that has also declined. The number of states that do that. So if I can give one, one last data, if I can show one last data, because terrorism is the elephant in the room. The number of terrorist attacks has declined dramatically. I have one more little graph here to show you. <laughs> this is from Erica Chenoweth, and uh, her data set, she, she crunched every terrorist attack, every uh, attempt at violent revolution from 1900 till, you know, a few years ago. And the numbers of those that 
uh, succeed that are nonviolent are three times more likely than violent. And the number of those that are violent attempts at violent revolution are four times more likely to fail. And the rates on the bottom graph there are the nonviolent ones are becoming more popular. In other words, and the number of states that terrorist groups have overturned, zero. They almost never achieve their political goals. Tell it to, tell it to Paris. I mean, the, the, uh, they, they're not going to, you think they're going to overturn no, the French what I'm government? Saying is, they, no, no, no. What no, I mean is, not. I'm not sure that you can quantitatively define our moral condition. I think well, that I it's, am. it's good news. I just did. It's, I understand. <laughs> but I think that even a single massacre or a single ethnic cleansing or a single genocide is an intolerable stain on a civilization. Okay, but we're never going to get to zero. It's never going to be zero. So we're not, but that we're it, never in it, any it, danger it, of if, getting if to it, zero. If it's that, we can't get to zero, so we shouldn't try to make two steps forward and one step back, then, then of course there's no point in trying. But we, we, we've been doing this for 500 years, and it's working. The enlightenment values of science and reason are really better than all the other attempts.